amber, fossilized resin from pine trees that grew 44 million years ago. Pieces of amber can be found all along the shores of the North Norfolk coast, where it's thought to be washed out of the cliffs or from the chalk reef in storms. In my experience, much of it is often milky white inside when found, but with the right treatment, it can be made to clear, producing the transparent, honey-colored gemstone we associate with amber. Under ultraviolet light, it will fluoresce a faint green color, although this is more easily seen when polished than in its raw state. Amber feels very light, much like plastic, can feel warm to the touch due to its poor heat conduction qualities, and will float in heavily salted water, although not seawater. The best test to confirm what you've found is amber, as opposed to stone or plastic, is the needle test. Heat up a needle and hold it against the amber. The smoke given off has a pleasant smell of pine or turpentine. Often the amber I find is white or milky inside. This is caused by tiny air bubbles in the amber and can be made to go clear by placing the amber in a slow cooker, adding oil and setting the temperature on low for a few days. I found it can take anything from three to seven days in the oil for the amber to clear, although really thick pieces may not allow the oil to permeate right through, so it may not always go perfectly clear. Ideally, you'll use linseed oil or a fine mineral oil, but I don't have any at the moment, so I'm just using sunflower oil. Always be sure to add the amber to cold oil to avoid splitting, and keep the temperature low to avoid causing sunburst effects within the amber when larger bubbles expand too quickly. Oil that's too hot can also discolor the amber, causing it to darken. Now that the amber has cleared a fair bit, I'm gonna clean it and polish it up. If the polishing reveals that it hasn't fully cleared, it can always go back in the oil for a few more days. Firstly, I start with the Dremel and a small sander drum to clean out any debris, smooth out any dents or holes, and even up the surface. This can get dusty, so I'd advise using a face mask and doing it outside. Although it does smell lovely, I'm not sure I want lungs full of amber dust. Once it's cleaned up with the Dremel, I use wet and dry paper, starting with 120 grit and working up to the finer 3000 grit. Keeping the amber and paper wet stops the dust. Amber is very soft, and I've heard that in the past it's been polished just by keeping it in a pocket for a week or two, and the action of it being moved around will polish it up. Once you are happy with the finish, you can use some polish to bring it up to a fine shine, and then rub with the soft cloth. The results can be great, and it's always exciting to see if your cloudy piece of amber had an insect trapped inside. I haven't had that yet, but I live in hope. The larger piece of these two could probably do with another week or so in oil to see if it will fully clear. Good luck with your own amber hunting. I'm always interested to see what's being found and would love to see the results if you have a go at clearing and polishing your own.